Hey everybody, um, it's been a while since I've done a solo video like this, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, do it right here. So um, I wanted to go ahead and uh, address a few things that came up this week. Um, one um, was a conversation that we had uh, in the Telegram group where somebody had asked a question about, you know, whether or not something... Uh, technically could have been done better during a wrestling match that they had done. Um, and so to address, the, and, and one of the responses to that um, was one that um, I may have responded a little too aggressively with, um, and I'm, I, I do regret that, but um, saying that, you know, well, in these circumstances, there was nothing that could have been done better. And here's the thing, is that... Um, you know, grappling is, wrestling of any kind, is a living martial art, okay? It's um, it's not like, you know, Kung Fu or Karate or Aikido where, um, you know, they have a set curriculum that you're supposed to know, there's set level that you're supposed to be at in order to be at certain levels. Um, you know, when it comes to uh, submission wrestling, um, Brazilian you just do that type of thing. Yeah, we do have a belt system and all that. We do have uh, different ranks to, to things, but um, people are coming up with new things all the time. And what defines one person as being a high-level grappler is going to uh, be different than what defines another person as being a high-level grappler. And, um, you know, when we talk about, you know, what, what, what it means for there to be a living martial art, is that people are still creating new things for it. So there might not be something in existence to be the answer to something right now, but that doesn't mean that there isn't something out there, right? And so, you know, it's always, you know, it, it's one thing to say, hey, I don't know. It's another thing to be like, you know, there is there's nothing that you can do. Um, and, you know, I kind of responded a little bit more to that specific question in the last playlist I did because we started talking about uh, different sweeps and whatnot that you can do um, from the very beginning that um, actually would have actually helped in that situation. And, and that, those are actually relatively basic things. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's one of the things that, you know, um, I think that there's always an answer, you know. Um, you know, some people, uh, there was a joke that I had seen earlier where... Um, you know, somebody's like asking the coach, well, how do I get out of this arm bar? And the coach is like, tap. <laughs> well, you know, you, there's, of course, with all submissions, like there's a certain level where um, you, you get into enough trouble in that submission that really the answer is, is that you have to admit that you've been defeated. I mean, that's, that is what submission grappling is, is that we get you to the point where there isn't an answer. Um, but that kind of leads into what I'm going to talk about today as far as technical stuff. So we've got, we've got the formal look back. Um, a video that I had shared in both the uh, Telegram group and on the Facebook, but uh, it wasn't on here because it wasn't my video, was talking about a particular triangle escape. And uh, the guys who were presenting it were, you know, high-level crazy guys. Um, and basically what was happening was that, you know, this arm was trapped in, for those of you who didn't see it, um, in, in the triangle. And this arm was out and it was kind of beginning to be kind of like a looser triangle so it was more of a triangle situation rather than a finished triangle that being said there are some good points uh that they made along the way so um the first what they did is that you know instead of trying to posture up and look up which is what i kind of tell everybody to do they were, they were talking about which by the way that's going to work for 90 percent of the triangles that you you're going to encounter is, is just building your posture up and stopping them from being able to break you down because generally speaking um, it's very hard to finish a triangle when when your opponent is up in this position what we, the way that you see that kind of be finished when somebody does that is that the person putting on the triangle will actually kind of do a crunch and pull themselves up so they're completely off the ground and being carried by the person that they're choking and then they'll finish it but they but like What's happening mechanically is going to be the same as what's happening when somebody's down here, right? Um, and so the, the grappler is moving his body to be able to finish it rather than uh, the other way around. So, you know, to 
kind of understand what's going on in this technique, um, you know, first things that we need to understand is that when we get into a triangle position here, right? Um, you'll see a lot of times when we get set up, my shin is going to be going diagonally across the shoulders here. Um, and I'm going to be just kind of really low down. And that's just kind of mechanically the way you're generally going to have to set up. And so, you know, I'm going to have to start to, you know, grab my ankle, pivot, so that now I am perpendicular to the neck, right? And then I can throw over, get that arm across and all that. And I should be able to finish just by cutting the angle here, flaring my foot out, and, you know, think about my feet, my legs going, thump, right? So I'm holding underneath here to the inside of this thigh to keep the angle and squeeze, right? So you see my hip is all the way out on this side. Now, for this technique, the person's trapped in the triangle, right? And before they have a chance to have the arm moved over, he's actually accepting that his posture is going to get broken down. He's going to get stuck in this position. So he needs to keep that leg that's going on the top across his shoulders, not across the back of his neck. So one of the things he's doing is he's blocking the hip right here. So the hip can't shift out this way. Um, so he's blocking that, and then once he can get down, he's going to, he moves his body over, right? So he's nice and low here. So he can sneak this arm under and grab the inside of the thigh with this arm coming over the knee here. So he's got an underhook here, and he's got the push on the hip here, and he's cupping that knee, but he's not like really, really gripping it here. And really from here, the triangle is pretty much done because what he's done when he's shifted over is he's pinned this leg on the ground. So he's dropping his weight, just like he's holding side control onto that leg. So now his opponent can't pull his leg out this way, right? And he can't, um, he can't finish the triangle. He might be able to do like a straight neck scissor here, um, but it's gonna be relatively difficult to finish. Now, what they did from there is he took this bottom hand, slid it through, covered his head, so that he could frame and stop, start to pop his head out, underhook, pass, and take side control. Okay, so that's, that's kind of the gist of what's going on here. Now, the question that I received, and I think that this is, um, you know, the kinds of questions that I, I wanna see more of in general in this group, um, was, well, you know, can't he go into a reverse triangle um, from there, the person who's uh, attacking the triangle, or um, can he just climb around to your back? And um, so it depends on what stage we're talking about here, what's gonna actually be possible as far as um, getting the reverse triangle or getting, um, uh, the, get, getting over to the back. So the thing is, is that when I'm down in this position and I'm blocking this hip right here, um, this arm, because it's blocking the hip, he can't come around this way. So his only path to my back is gonna be around this way, but I've got this arm free, right? And so in order for somebody to have access to my back, they have to be able to get around this arm. And right now, you know, his thigh is up on my shoulder. So he doesn't really have a path to come around to my back because of this arm being in here. But that being said, you know, we talked about once we get to here, we pass this arm under, and then we cup onto the thigh here, right? With this arm cupping the knee, right? Hooking the knee. So at this stage, um, you know, he does have more of a clear path to my back, but I'm dropping my weight down, just like I'm doing in side control. I'm actually inflating my chest, looking up a little bit more. And what I'm doing is I'm pinning that leg to the ground. So now, because of his femur being stuck here, right? You know, it's, it's here. You know, he's going to have a hard time starting to move this leg. Could he potentially do it? Yeah, yeah, he potentially could. Um, but, you know, when we talk about, um, and I'm, I'm going to guess that the, that the reverse triangle that uh, this person was referring to is actually what I, what I refer to more as a torture chamber, right? So what I mean by that is this position, right? So you see that I've got 
an arm trapped in here. It could be the other one, right? It doesn't, it doesn't matter that much which side the arm is on, but you know, I got arm bars from here. I could potentially hip up. Um, I'm a little bit more sketchy about the idea of lifting my hips up and dropping my shin into somebody's neck because what you're gonna do is you're gonna stretch out the back of their neck and that could, you know, leave someone paralyzed. So I'm, I'm like, I don't know that anybody should really do that. But you know, I could flare out and I could bring my knees together like I'm cricketing them. Um, so I could get that, I can pull onto this and I can, you know, start attacking the shoulder or I can start attacking the arm, their wrist locks here, you know, stuff like that. So um, that's quite what I'm assuming that you mean rather than a reverse triangle where, you know, we are here, right? So arm, head, neck and all that. And then I hug the torso to finish, right? So. That's the one I, th I, I think you're referring to because I don't think that there's a, uh, a path to um, to a regular reverse triangle. I think you're referring to a torture chamber there, which is referred to as, to as a reverse triangle. So I'm not making any correction there. Um, but as far as like the path to the back goes um, and to that, I think that a lot of, you know, the, the being down here and, and pinning that leg down is what's going to really, really prevent that. Um, the next kind of stage here, I mean, he would be here, right? He was overhooking this way. Um, and there's a very good reason for that, right? If I'm, if I'm coming this way, right, then I'm at risk for an plata. This kind of is going to protect against that, but if I immediately do that little hook there that people have done for a very long time, um, you know, the, the person's usually going to transition into an omoplata from there, right? So this grip, you know, right here is preventing that back take, right? And it's preventing that shifting into the reverse triangle or, or uh, torture chamber position. So is it possible? Yes. And, and, what, and that's one of the things that makes this a very good question is because, um, you know, the follow-up question is, well, why isn't it? Because, you know, there might be absolutely a reason why um, you could take the back from there. You could go to the torture chamber position from there. Um, and so by saying, okay, well, can't you just do that? Well, you know, this is blocking that. Well, if that was a detail that you had it picked up on, right? Then um, now, because you asked that question, because you were thinking in that way and, that, and being critical of the technique, um, well, now we have the answer as to why that's not going to. So, you know, you guys are going to be much more suited, uh, and you're benefit a lot more when you ask these kinds of questions. So, from here, you know, once I get and I start to go here and start to cover, right, to try to pry myself out. I think at this moment, because my arm is no longer hooking here and it's kind of coming in here, then uh, that's going to be the moment um, when I start to go for the head cover to kind of pop that off, where I think you're in more of a, a risky position to having that uh, torture chamber slash um, uh, back take happen, okay? Um, that being said, not no technique is 100% perfect, right? Ever. There's always going to be somebody that's going to come, come along and... Uh, come up with something that's going to defeat all the things that you had thought about. Um, and I think that one of the things that I think that you're in a much greater risk for, right, is simply this, right? So um, I've got this triangle position here and he blocks my hip here, right? What I'm gonna do to counter that is I'm just gonna grab onto his wrist, right? I want his wrist right there. I don't want him to get that back. And I'm just going to grab above the tricep and I'm going to start pulling. Now what's going to happen here is that because of the limitations of his shoulder here, he's going to start turning this way, which was the way that he was going to scoot his hips anyways, right? So he wants to shift his body down and that he absolutely should want to do that because once I start getting down like this, this uh, Kimura is no longer there, right? So. I've got this kind of triangle position, and once he puts his hand here, before he has a chance to pip, I want to pin and pull because he's not gonna he's not gonna want to move this direction because it's gonna make it tighter, right? And so from here, I'm going to release the triangle and I'm gonna cut my angle. I'm gonna put my foot down into the ground here, right? Because I don't want his body to flatten me out here. It's I can still potentially finish this if he does. Right? I'm gonna put my boot on, I'm gonna drop my calf down, and then I can finish 
the Kimura here, right? Um, so that, that I think is the bigger risk with that particular technique. Um, that being said, should you not try it? Well, we're going to get into that in a, here in a second, right? But I'm here and I can finish that. So he, the moment I feel like, okay, I've broken his posture down. I want to get this triangle. He starts to block my hip so that I can't get the angle that I want to get, and I know that he's going to try to flatten out my leg, I'm going to first start to pull on his tricep, right, as I hold his wrist in place, so that now he's not going to want to do that, right? He's going to, he's going to submit himself if he does that. I'm going to unlock, and I'm going to shift over to the side, pass my arm through, grab my own wrist, and I finish that Kimura. Now, if he does start to knock this leg over, that's fine. I might put my heel onto his butt, Right? Because what he can do here is if, if I'm loose about this and he starts to roll out, then he's going to unwind that. So I need to be heavy with my heel here if I have to. Generally speaking, if I've got this up, then it's going to be mu it's going to be much harder for me to do that. I don't have to have my foot down there. But I do need to keep his hips down. Boom. And then I can finish that tomorrow. So, here's the thing. Is that... When you, when, when you're in a bad position, your priority is to not lose. And so, you know, let's say that you're really good at escaping the back, right? Or you think that you can, you know, get to, um, maybe, you know, somebody's pivoting around and they're trying to get to that torture chamber position, but you're already starting to work that second arm in. And so you get two arms in, start protecting your neck, you're in a regular back mount. Right? So, or our body triangle or something along those lines. So if you can get there, you know, that might actually be a better position than I'm currently getting choked in a triangle. You're not all the way out because you're in a really, really bad position, but you are further along than you were before. You are safer than you were before because basically you were kind of in that area where you were in a submission and you were, you know, 90% of the way to being completely fucked. So now, you know, we're 70% fucked instead of 90, right? Um, if you do get, end up in that torture chamber position, well, you know, you might actually end up being 95% uh, fucked. So you might be like, okay, that's, that's my next thing. And so I think, I think that that is more of a concern than having my back taken. I would rather have my back taken than be defending an active triangle, right? So... Um, Start, start thinking of that as um, in your hierarchy of um, of uh, priorities when you're in a losing position, right? I would rather be mounted than submitted, right? So I'm moving to something that may not be ideal, but I have to escape the the submission. So you know. In an ideal world, I want to be playing guard or I want to be on, on top in side control or on top in knee right or mount or have the back mount. Like, all those things would be great. I, but, you know, I might be on the bottom there. So don't get into a position where you're going to get submitted. If you are getting, if you're in a position where you're getting submitted, get out of the submission. That is your first priority. You can clean up the mess after that, but, you know, don't be like, well, I, I don't want to try this escape or whatever because it's going to put me into another position and you know that's one of the reasons why like if somebody's triangling me you know this might be a good idea you know hooking the arm and making them want to go for that omoplata right because i know that the next thing that they're going to want to do is go for an omoplata so if he's got that triangle and i get here and he goes for that omoplata well as he's trying to transition i'm going to start to roll out of that Right, or I am going to get here, and when he starts to go for that omoplata, I'm posting up, and I'm getting as tall as possible, right, so that I he can't break down my posture, so that it becomes much more difficult for him to set up that omoplata. So you know, it might be that yes, I'm going from being in a bad submission to another bad submission, but I'm better at defending that second bad submission than I am the first one, so I'd rather be defending that omoplata than I would be that um, that triangle. Or maybe I just know that you know my opponent 
you know, he can finish an omoplata, but I basically have to start here for him to be able to do that, right? And so if I know that he's shit at getting me to that position, well, maybe I'm, even if my omoplata escapes are not great, maybe I'm still going to try to get him to go for that omoplata, right? So those are my thoughts on that. Um, and so please do ask, ask questions. Um, try to point holes into things from time to time. Um, you know, some people find it a little bit disrespectful when people do that. But I mean, the difference is whether or not you're trying to um, completely discredit a technique versus being like, well, this is what I see. Um, why can't I just do this? Because you, you earnestly want to know the answer. Right, and I and I think that's what's going on here, and I think that that uh, that is one of the things that's going to help us all learn and develop. So I hope I, I hope I've given you guys things to think about and things to to consider, um, and if this is, you know, maybe maybe you are the person who really loves when people go for this technique, and you saw that okay, yes, I can get to the torture chamber really easily, and you really really get that down to a science, so that you are just. The moment that hand goes on the hips, you're immediately pivoting around to the back. Great. You know, be that guy. Um, start developing a system for doing that so that you can, you know, try to bait people to try to defend your triangles this way. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, I don't think that there's a wrong answer here. I think that um, it's not as easy to get to the back or get to the, to the uh, torture chamber as uh, you assumed, but that doesn't mean it's not possible and it doesn't mean that you're not right, right? Um, that being said, I still think that it's a good technique to for escaping the triangle. Um, but, you know, the way that you learn this and really, really decide whether or not it's a good technique is to try it rolling. And um, I know that we're still fighting COVID and I want everybody to be safe and I don't want you guys taking unnecessary risks like meeting people off the internet and all that. But if you guys are practicing, if you can, um, go ahead and try out this technique when you're rolling. Go ahead and uh, work with it. Try to do it in positional rolling. Try to find all the, the holes and whatever and try to clean it up. And maybe there's some details that they didn't give you and I didn't give you that makes it work for you. Right? You can always add to it and please share it when you do. Um, and that goes for anything I've shared on here. You know, I know that uh, when we did the videos last week, um, there were details that I had left out that um, I think are very good details to uh, pay attention to. Um, I didn't leave them out, I don't think, in the earlier versions of that. So look through all the, the, the playlists and whatnot uh, so that you can uh, see what I left out. I mean, it'll still work with what I showed you because I, I mean, basically everything was there. but. Um, I'm ranting on and this is going on forever, but uh, I hope you guys found this useful and I will see you next time.